Denver is one of my favorite cities in the country. It's the city that I visited most frequently when I was growing up, so it certainly played a major role in developing my love for cities. In this series, I quickly touch on a city's history, population, skyline, as well as a few things that make it unique. Now, let's meet the Mile High City. I always like to explore how a city wound up being where it is today. Denver is located where the Great Plains meet the Rocky Mountains at the junction of the South Platte and Cherry Creek Rivers. It's a surprising location to find such a large city with one travel writer saying it was as if angels were carrying a city to a proper place and accidentally dropped it here. During the early 1800s, the area was a stopping place for the Arapaho people as well as fur trappers and traders. Everything changed though when gold was discovered in 1858, leading to a huge influx of people and the creation of a couple towns. Two years later, the towns were consolidated and were later named Denver. As with most cities out west, the arrival of railroads led to significant growth and helped Denver become a food processing center. Today, Denver has a city proper population of 711,000, making it the 19th largest city in the country, falling between Seattle and Oklahoma City. If you've watched many of my other videos, you'll know that I think metro population is more indicative of a city's true size, and Denver is also ranked 19th in the country for metro population with just under 3 million. Its metro population is just smaller than that of Tampa Bay's and larger than Baltimore's. Some of the most recognizable companies headquartered in Denver include Dish Network, Frontier Airlines, Coors, and Noodles & Company. Denver is home to 28 institutions of higher learning, including two public universities, the University of Colorado Denver and the Metropolitan State University of Denver. Call me shallow, but when it comes to cities, I think appearances matter, which is why evaluating a city's skyline is one of my favorite parts of making these videos. My feelings about the Denver skyline have changed a little over the years. Growing up in Idaho, Denver was the largest city that I would visit on a frequent basis, and I thought that it had an incredible skyline. Well, now that I've lived throughout the country, the Denver skyline hasn't aged particularly well for me. Its buildings just don't come together to form a very picturesque skyline in my opinion. If you took the average height of its tallest five buildings, Denver would be ranked as the 16th tallest skyline in the country, being just shorter than Pittsburgh and just taller than Cleveland. The tallest building in the city is the Republic Plaza at 714 feet, but my favorite skyscraper in the city is the Wells Fargo Center, also known as the Cash Register Building because of its unique crown. I also like the Daniels and Fisher Tower, which was modeled after St. Mark's Campanile in Venice. It was built in 1911 and at 325 feet was at one point the tallest building between the Mississippi River and the state of California. The Daniels and Fisher Tower is located on the 16th Street Mall, which is one of many things that makes Denver a unique city. The 16th Street Mall is a pedestrian promenade with a street designed like the backside of a diamondback rattlesnake. The mall is flanked by 42 outdoor cafes and has free shuttles that take you up and down the mile long street. On the south end of the mall, you'll find the Colorado State Capitol building. Although the Capitol at first glance looks like a standard state capitol building, there are a few things that make it unique. Most notably is the fact that the pink stone seen on the inside of the building is called Rose Onyx, which was found in Colorado. It's the only onyx this color anywhere in the world, and the amount used for the capitol was the entire known supply of the incredibly rare stone. The dome is coated in 200 ounces of gold, which is fitting considering the significance of gold for the city and the state. There is also a step which is exactly 5,280 feet above sea level, which has the words one mile above sea level engraved on it. The Civic Center Park separates the capital from another unique Denver landmark, the Denver Mint. The Denver Mint, which is a branch of the US Mint, is the single largest producer of coins in the world. Near the Mint is the most eye-catching building in the city, the Denver Art Museum. It's one of the largest art museums between Chicago and the West Coast, and the exterior alone is a work of art. The two main buildings on the museum campus both have very unique architectural styles. One of the most notable public works of art in the city is the giant blue bear that peers into the Colorado Convention Center. This giant bear is 40 feet tall and has become one of the icons of the city. Across the street from the convention center is the Denver Performing Arts Complex, which is the second largest performing arts center under one roof in the country. 
The complex has a unique giant sculpture of its own, often referred to as the Dancing Aliens. One of the things that Denver is most known for is its proximity to the mountains, and sitting up against the mountains near Denver is perhaps the city's most iconic performance venue, Red Rocks Amphitheater. Red Rocks is a beautiful outdoor amphitheater built into the rocks. The world-famous venue seats nearly 10,000 people and is one of the most unique landmarks of the Denver area. Between Red Rocks and downtown Denver is an iconic Denver restaurant, Casa Bonita. Casa Bonita is a Mexican restaurant that is known more for its venue than it is for its food. It's billed itself as the world's most exciting restaurant and has a 30-foot indoor waterfall with cliff divers, a haunted cave, and unique themed seating rooms that in total have a seating capacity of over 1,000. It was a magical place for me to visit as a kid and was usually the highlight of our trips to Denver. It's been featured in an episode of South Park and the South Park creators are the new owners of the restaurant and will be reopening it sometime later this year. Denver's airport is the largest in the country and second largest in the world by total land mass. It's also the third busiest airport in the country by passenger traffic. The peaked roof is meant to resemble snow-capped mountains, which is a great design choice for the airport in my opinion. The airport is also famous for the blue Mustang sculpture outside the airport, which is nicknamed Blucifer because of its demonic appearance. There are many conspiracies surrounding the airport, and the airport decided to lean into that by unveiling a talking gargoyle sculpture in 2019 that jokes about the conspiracies. Another thing that makes Denver unique is that its amusement park, Elitch Gardens, is located in the actual downtown. It's the only theme park in the country located in the heart of a major city. I've been there a couple times and it's great being able to take in views of the city while enjoying the park. And lastly, I'll mention Union Station. As I explained earlier, the railroad played a major role in making Denver what it is, and Union Station is the historic transportation hub of the city. It was reopened in 2014 and now has restaurants, shopping, and a hotel. Well, that wraps up my video about Denver. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and check out some of my other videos about cities. And if you have a city you'd like to see an overview on, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.